Wolf's Lair 1944. Hitler is speaking to his officers about the situation on the front. Suddenly the room is wrecked by explosion. Some people are thrown up out of the windows, one is killed on the spot and many others are seriously injured. Meanwhile Klaus von Stauffenberg, the man who is responsible for the bombing, is hurrying to Berlin to take over the power from the Nazis. But Hitler is alive and their plan is bound to failure. Stauffenberg could only use one bomb and in the last moment it was moved so that part of the table shielded Hitler from the blast. The plot involved thousands of people, many of whom were high state officials and took many months to prepare, and all those powerful men together were unable to kill the Führer. Yet only less than five years ago, one man almost succeeded where thousands had failed. Today we will tell his story. We'll have to go ten years back in time. Nazis have come to power and they are beginning to steer Germany towards war. Hitler is pursuing expansionist policies and one victory follows another. Saarland is reunited with Germany and Austria and Sudetenland are annexed. Many Germans saw this as Germany's return to great power status and Hitler's popularity grew. However, one man saw the things otherwise. He saw the shadow of war. Where some saw the return of national glory and stability, he saw the descent toward another world war and he came to a conclusion. The one that would have great impact on his life. He decided that if Europe is to avert another war, the men who were behind the aggressive policies had to be done away with. He decided that Hitler had to die, but who was this man? Meet Georg Elser. He is a craftsman, a rather skilled craftsman. However, for the job he has undertaken, he has no special skills. Yet he is dead serious about carrying it out. Where could one kill Hitler? Well, the best opportunity was probably in Munich around the 8th of November. Back in 1923, Hitler and the Nazi party attempted a coup in Munich. They seized the Bügerpleukelle, but were later dispersed in street fighting. Hitler was imprisoned. After coming to power, Hitler commemorated the failed coup every year with a procession and a speech in the Bügerpleukelle. On the 8th of November, 1938, Elsa went to Munich to look for an opportunity for the assassination. One possibility was to shoot Hitler from the crowd of onlookers. However, the abundance of Nazi salutes and flags made that difficult. Then Hitler would speak in the Bügerpoikeller, but only veteran Nazis were allowed to enter. As shooting Hitler was complicated, Elsa decided that it would be better to blow Hitler up during his speech. It didn't make his task a lot easier. The keller was basically a large pub that, for the most time, was open to all people. So one could be able to place a bomb there, but before Hitler's speech it would be searched. The bomb would have to be carefully concealed. How could you hide something as large as a timed bomb? Well, you put it in a wall or a pillar. If Elser could pull that off, then it would be days between placing the bomb and the explosion. That meant that Elser also needed an elaborate timer, one that could tick for days and go off with the precision of minutes. A task consisting considered almost impossible with the technology of 1930s. These alone were difficult tasks, not to mention the problems with obtaining the explosives. In theory, Nazi Germany was a totalitarian state where people were tightly controlled and therefore could not be able to acquire the explosive materials, at least without alarming the Gestapo. In practice, it was quite different. Military factories were crunching out arms on an unprecedented scale and were in need of workers. Elsa signed up to work in the shipping department of Waldenmeyer Armaments Factory. He had to receive explosive materials and deliver them to other workers. There he got some knowledge about the explosives and could put aside 250 pellets of powder. Soon Elsa had to leave that place. He didn't have enough explosives yet and he headed out to find some more. He went to a local quarry and began helping out the workers. When the owner questioned, what are you doing here? He replied that, ich bin uh, unemployed. Yeah. Und, und bought, uh, und, uh, want to help. Yeah. He was hired on the spot and began regularly working there. Now it was time to steal some more explosives. As it was Nazi Germany, the security was very... Wait, that wasn't so hard at all. He went to the shed where the explosives were stored and found out that it wasn't even properly locked. Elsa began paying visits to the shed at night and carrying away small amounts of explosives. Finally, he carried away a crate full of detonators. The security at the quarry was so lax, the owner was sent to a concentration camp after Elsa's assassination attempt was discovered. Now that he had the materials, it was time to design the bomb. Elser had no prior knowledge about bomb making and at the time there was no internet where one could look that up. 
but as German army was expanding, it needed more pioneers, and therefore literature about explosives circulated freely. Elser bought a booklet, and it taught him a lot. He carried out a couple of test explosions in his family's garden shed. His uncle was working in the field. Suddenly there was a loud noise from the shed, and horses panicked. Elsa later explained to his uncle that he was trying something out, and when he was done, his uncle would certainly hear about it. The detonator was ready, but it was just the tip of the iceberg. The real difficulty was with the timing mechanism. It had to be compact, be able to work for a long time, and be precise. A difficult challenge, yet one that Elsa managed to carry out with perfection. He had received some clock parts instead of a salary in his earlier job, and now put him to good use. The basis of the mechanism was a clock. Every time the hour hand made a full circle, it moved the cog wheel for one twelfth, so the timer could be set for 144 hours, or exactly six days in advance. In order to be totally sure, he added a second clock. The timer mechanism released a nail that struck a firing cap of a rifle shell. The powder in the shell ignited and detonated the blasting caps. These in turn detonated the explosives. If one failed, there were two more. The bomb was placed into a wooden box which was insulated with a layer of cork from the inside so the ticking sounds couldn't be heard. Now Elsa went to Munich to install the bomb. If earlier he could manage without much risk, now it was really getting dangerous. He wanted to place the bomb into the pillar nearest to Hitler. He had to make a cavity in a concrete pillar with primitive tools. As the pillar was in a public place, he had to do it during the night and leave no trace. This task was the ultimate definition of grinding. He had to work in constant danger of discovery. In the evening, Elsa hid himself in the Bügerpoi keller. When the night began, he went to the pillar and began his work. He worked for some hours and then slept until morning. When the keller was opened, he sneaked out. First, he removed the wooden paneling at the base of the column and added hinges to it, turning it into a secret door. It took him three nights. Now the real work began. He had to dig out a cavity in the column for the device. At first, he used a chisel, but the noise was too loud. He then switched to a hand drill. If he had been discovered, a trip to the Gestapo and the death warrant would have been certain. Yet he had to return for more than 30 times. Meanwhile, World War II broke out as Hitler invaded Poland. Finally, a week before Hitler's speech, the chamber was ready. Elser pressed as much explosives in it as he could. He came to install the timing mechanism, but the Kella was unexpectedly locked. He had to return the next day. There was a dance party in the keller. Elser attended it, but he was far from dancing. When everyone had left, he began installing the timing mechanism, only to discover that the cavity was too small for it. Elsa sawed off the corners of the mechanism and attended another dance party. During the night, he installed the mechanism into the pillar. It fitted perfectly. He set the clocks in motion. The bomb was to go off in the middle of Hitler's speech. Elser prepared to escape to Switzerland. He went back to the keller to check the clocks. They were on time. Next day he left towards the Swiss border. Every year Hitler would speak in the Bügerpoi keller for two hours. However, this time he needed to be back in Berlin to plan the war, so he cut his speech shorter and began it half an hour earlier. On the 8th of November, the Bügenpoi keller was filled with 1500 old Nazi party members. They greeted Hitler with multiple SIG HEIL! Then it was one hour and twenty minutes till explosion. Hitler spoke about German defeat in World War I, how Germany was betrayed from behind, about the rise of the Nazi party and how it made Germany strong again, how the Western powers have dragged Germany into another war. But now Germany was strong and her enemies were weak. This time Germany will crush its opponents. The bomb was slowly ticking. Now it was only twenty minutes left. Hitler spoke for some time more and then hurried to the train station. Thirteen minutes later, the Bügerpoi keller was rocked with explosion. The pillar was destroyed and part of the ceiling caved in. The hall was filled with smoke and cries of the wounded. Eight people were killed and more than sixty injured. After the chaos settled, the arrests and interrogations began. More than a thousand people were rounded up by Gestapo. However, they didn't know that they already had the bomber in their custody. Elsa had attempted to escape to Switzerland, but he was captured by the guards just 25 meters from the border. Detonator parts had been found in his pocket with a postcard of Bügerpoi Keller. Soon, evidence began to mount against him. He was recognized by many people in Munich, and there was no point in denying. He confessed. However, he was not shot. Hitler wanted his assassins to be tried in a public trial after the war. It would have been a good propaganda. Therefore, the would-be assassins were rounded up in concentration camps. When it was clear that the war was lost, all of them were executed. Among them was Georg Elser. He was killed on the 9th of April 1945, a month before the end of the war.